Okay, so while traveling from India to Singapore today, I wanted to take the time to reflect on my experiences of India over the past 10 days. India is a collage of contradictions, simultaneously confusing, exhilarating, scary, and inspiring. India is both a nation of wealth and poverty, which is constantly apparent. You can walk down the street and see the most awful littering and waste, but just around the corner, the most beautiful, untouched landscape. It's bizarre. When I first arrived, uh, the confusing Indian head roll, is that yes or does it mean no? A nod often means no, and a head roll means maybe no or sometimes yes, I still don't really understand. Um, being a white man in Dharamsala, I got to experience what it was like to be a celebrity. More than a hundred people, I reckon, requested to have selfies with me in just a week. This would occur when hiking, swimming in the river, at dinner, or even if it was clear that I was clearly rushing for the airport, people would still stop you to try and have a selfie with you. The road slash driving is just bizarre. During the day you fear for your life. I thought I was going to die so many times on the mountain passes on the tuk-tuk. By night, however, after a few beers, you feel like you're in a real-life game of Super Mario Kart, which can be fun if you can accept this is just what is happening here and set aside your fear of death. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about class divide. So after a few days, I started to learn to try and judge when someone comes up to you what they're after. If they are lower class, usually they want something from you financially, whereas if they're upper class, they often just want to talk to you and be your friend. Yet sometimes it's still hard to kind of tell and work it out straight away which one they are. Food tasted amazing on the whole. God, the curry is so good. But to put it bluntly, myself being a Westerner and all of the Aussies I was with spent a lot of time in the bathroom, which was often just a squat hole and a bucket of water. So. You learn to deal with it pretty fast and your body has to adapt really quickly to the constant bacteria attack. Um, wild dogs. Probably my biggest constant fear throughout my trip. While I didn't see any dog attacks during my visit, they keep you in a constant state of fear when walking home at night uh, in particular. Oh, I can close um, that gate, man. They're just unpredictable, so <laughs> it's just... It's, just, just worrying. Uh, and although I learned a couple of ways, to, you know, carrying a stick, jumping at it, that's you know, meant to help. But you know, you're still in a constant state of fear. Um, but then, when all said and done, really, in the ten days that I've been here, I've only really just scratched the surface of India. With so much to do, learn, and experience, India assaults and massages one's sensibilities, and you really grow if you're willing to just throw yourself in. My 10 days have been truly one of the greatest experiences of my life uh, and a great start to my traveling and I can't wait to return.